We're back to New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. I refuse to accept vaccination proof as condition of entry. We have got that story, plus the crypto kings of Leon. But first, this week in tyranny for you, Los Angeles School District partners with Microsoft to introduce COVID-19 Daily Pass app for kids. This coming from ReclaimTheNet.org, the Los Angeles Unified School District has partnered with tech giant Microsoft to introduce a COVID-19 Daily Pass app, which requires students as young as 13 to complete daily in-app health checks in order to gain access to the school. Students that pass the health checks will be given a scannable QR code. If that sounds familiar, if you maybe watched last week's episode of New World Next Week, a scannable QR code entrance ticket, which gives them access to the school for the day. As long as they have a negative test result for COVID-19, show no symptoms, and have a temperature of under 100 degrees. Even after obtaining the entrance ticket and being granted access to the school, Students will still be required to wear masks and social distance. In addition to requiring students to complete daily health checks, the Daily Pass will also encourage students to schedule weekly COVID-19 tests, get the vaccine just probably over and over and over again, maybe wear three masks, and of course, store any external test results in that app. Not only does the system force students in the L.A. district to use this COVID-19 daily pass system to gain access to schools, but of course, health scare gangsters get all that personal data. Anthem Blue Cross, Cedar sinai HealthNet, Stanford University, UCLA, and of course, Event 201 Superstars, Johns Hopkins University. They're going to provide insights for strategies to create the safest possible school environment. The EU, of course, as we've covered this for the last what year, if not longer, we knew all this was coming. We didn't maybe know that COVID was going to be the excuse, but again, it is the blank check excuse for everything the Brave New World Order wants to do. The EU is planning to introduce digital green pass vaccine certificates very soon. The UK looks increasingly likely to adopt a digital immunity passport system. And of course, your friends at the Fangsters, several tech giants have joined a digital vaccine passport coalition in anticipation of governments, airlines, and other terrible business monopolies all embracing the technology. Hey, James, at least it's not the, the anal swab, right? <laughs> it could be worse. Oh, but that'll probably be coming. And don't worry, you'll be able to check your little box on the app when you get your anal swab. It's clean. Well, not clean, but you know what I mean. Oh, God. Um, yeah. You know, it's sometimes I, I know you remark in on Morning Monarchy. I, I hear you remarking about you look at some of the old propaganda, the old timey propaganda, and you think, oh, how did people ever fall for that? But then you look at the modern propaganda and you go, I, I, I cringe. I'm in embarrassment at the propaganda that's being spewed right now, knowing that people will look back 50 years from now and go, what were they thinking? Um I hope there are people to look back 50 years from now to think that. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, uh, honestly, I, 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 I think I'm going to encourage people to actually stomach their bile and actually watch the propaganda video that's embedded here. And this is from reclaimthenet.org. It's being reposted, so you don't have to give any traffic to any uh, un, 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 uh, unviewable sites or sites that you shouldn't be giving clicks to. And you can watch this propaganda video because it, it really is... I guess I'm just so far detached from the culture, the mainstream normie culture now, that I can't even, I cannot look at this without seeing nightmare dystopia. This is the kind of stuff that you would see in a movie about some nightmare dystopia, like, oh, the, everything's gone crazy, and look at the happy, clappy music and the cartoon characters, and thank you for getting me the test, Daddy, I love you. This kind of, it's just total nightmare. I cannot see this as anything other than total neon flashing light nightmare. And they're presenting it like it's just the greatest thing since sliced bread and everyone wants this. And it'll make us so safe so that we can go back to our indoctrination camps yet again. I, I just, I don't know. I cannot connect with this. And I cannot, I just don't believe that people are clamoring for this. I'm sure that some are. But I can't, I can't anymore interface or understand that mentality. And I think that speaks to the fact that what we are doing in creating our own media space and creating our own 
place. It's not an echo chamber. It is a reality chamber. This is, this is where people go to not be affected by all that mainstream programming that is going to make you see that kind of garbage propaganda as something good. And I think that's, I think that's a good thing to be detached enough to see this as the nightmare that it is. That means you have your own cognitive faculties. You have possession of your own mental awareness and you can proceed based on that. Um, how do we proceed? Well, obviously, we do not accept these pa- passes. We do not start checking in and giving our kids these passes so that they can go to school and all of this. What does that mean? Where does that go from here? It's going to be a lot of fun finding out, right, James? Yeah, we're going to keep finding out more and more. But I also see, again, fo- you know, folks in my chat the, in the reality chambers Somebody mentioned they had a, essentially a work meeting yesterday, and they, of course, went in and sat down without a mask. And all it takes is for a few other people to see that, and boom, all their masks come off. Just as much as, unfortunately, people are monkey see, monkey do with bad things, they'll also maybe do it with some good things as well. Positive propaganda, maybe? Hey, yeah, yeah. Yes, Most Favored Nation has now mandated it for visitors. After, of course, tricking U.S. diplomats into it, this is the news today, you guys, from the New York Post. China makes COVID-19 anal swabs mandatory for foreigners. And as I talked about on my morning show on Monday, China gave U.S. diplomats a anal COVID tests in error, American officials say. And again, it's one thing for the... For the employees and the adults who willingly want to take part in all this stuff, play status games, win status prizes, what about their family? And that's what freaks me out about so about so much of this, man. All right. So enough of that tyranny. Let's go for this weekend pushback because not everybody's bending over for tyranny, even though the mainstream just wants to show you, oh, look, everybody's bending over for it until you maybe actually talk to some folks. Actually, speaking of, my wife just ran to the post office earlier, purposefully muzzleless, and just basically went in smiling. Hey, oh, how you doing? Nothing. Nobody said anything. And that, again, this is a... It is a giant psychological operation, but we can, I guess, I guess we can take part in the operation as well, too, James. But as we said, not everybody is bending over for tyranny. Our second story on this New World Next Week, episode 439. This is our 12th calendar year of doing New World Next Week. And we grab this one from, of course, our colleagues at globalresearch.ca, Mexico to ban glyphosate. GM corn presidential decree comes despite intense pressure from the industry and U.S. authorities, which, of course, are kind of the same thing. Mexican President Obrador quietly rocked the agribusiness world with his New Year's Eve decree to phase out the use of the herbicide glyphosate and the cultivation of genetically modified corn. His administration sent an even stronger aftershock two weeks later, clarifying their statement that the government would also phase out GM corn imports in three years and would ban Of course, not just corn for human consumption, but yellow corn destined primarily for livestock under NAFTA. And I had to double check, James. It is that Reagan era thing that Clinton furthered and baby Bush finalized. Remember, the Cokes and Pepsis all work together under NAFTA. The United States has seen a 400 percent increase in corn exports to Mexico. Of course, the vast majority of it, all a bunch of GM monstrosities. The bold policy move fulfills a campaign promise by Mexico's populist president, I guess it happens sometimes, whose agricultural policies have actually begun to favor the Mexican producers, small-scale farmers, and actually protect consumers kind of alarmed by the rise of obesity and chronic diseases associated with processed foods. James, I've talked about this in years past on Media Monarchy, that slowly, as the American diet went north to Canada and also south to Mexico, all those folks discovered, hey, we're fat and unhealthy. How on earth did this possibly happen? In banning glyphosate, though, the decree cites the precautionary principle and the growing body of scientific research showing the dangers of the chemical, the active ingredient, of course, in Bayer Santos Roundup herbicide. The Mexican government had stopped imports of glyphosate since late 2019, citing the World Health Organization's warning 
that the chemical is a probable carcinogen. James, that's the thing, man. You never know when the state's going to tell you the air is totally safe to breathe at ground zero, or you should freak out and, and mask and cover. And yes, there are all the ambulance chasing lawyer ads on TV for do you have cancer from using too much Roundup? James? I wonder if they'll kick Monsanto and the USDA and all of these kind of bodies off of YouTube for promoting information that goes against WHO guidelines. Hey, the WHO says it's a carcinogen, guys. Why are you promoting? You're selling it? Surely that's worth a social media ban or two. Anyway, yeah, uh, I really hope people will read through this article. It is a long and detailed one, but there's a lot of really interesting tidbits in here, including the link to the uh, USDA uh, unofficial loose translation of this actual decree. I unfortunately do not read Spanish, so I am relying on the translation. Hopefully some Spanish speakers will be able to go to the original and uh, read through it. But the, the the language here that I can read, this is, this is pretty good stuff. The purpose of the decree is to gradually replace the use, acquisition, distribution, promotion, and importation of the chemical substance called glyphosate and of agrochemicals used in our con- country that contain it as an active ingredient. Uh, the agencies are instructed to so that within the scope of their competencies, they refrain from acquiring, using, distributing, promoting, and importing glyphosate in order to reduce the possible impact of the gradual substitution of the use and import of glyphosate, um, etc., etc. Um, even um, talking about food security and sovereignty, it goes pretty deep here, and uh, it's definitely got the right the right rhetoric anyway, and the right idea. Yeah, food security, food safety. These are things that people should be taking seriously. I don't think we should be waiting for governments to act on them because most governments are not going to act in your interests. This is a rare example where it seems this government is standing up to a great degree of, uh, of criticism and onslaught that they've been subjected to to try to get them to not do this decision. And on that note, I'll include a link to uh, one of the articles that's linked up in that article we're citing here. Uh, a Guardian article on Revealed, Monsanto owner and U.S. officials pressured Mexico to drop glyphosate ban, all about the lobbying, the intense lobbying effort that's been ongoing uh, against Mexico to basically stop them from doing this, and also that had been applied to Thailand in 2019. There's a lot of history here, and it's very important for people to understand this, at least insofar as it underlines the point that I think you and I have been making and the uh, uh, independent media reality sphere has been making for a long time now, which is that these chemical monstrosities are uh, part of the corporate food chain infrastructure that we're all wedded to, to the extent that we literally buy into it and buy all our processed chemical food substitute garbage, soylent green crap from the mega mega chain superstores. If you do grow your own food and or support your local farmers markets and or participate in local grower co-ops or all of the other kinds of arrangements that are possible to actually get food that you can source directly from people that you actually know in your actual community, hats off to you. That is the solution to this. And I think we should be concentrating on that. So yes, I applaud the Mexican government for doing this, but I'm not going to hold my breath and wait for the Japanese government to make all the right decisions about food safety and security for me. I'm going to do what I can to try to take that into my own hands. I hope other people out there are doing the same. We've talked many times about how politics is downstream from culture, that by the time politicians are talking about it, man, that ship has sailed. But good things can still come from that. Something else I've also mentioned a million times, James, is just remember, little representative Mike Pompeo from Kansas, just a regular little Congress critter here in the States, he helps pass the Dark Act, denying Americans the right to know, that whole act in Kansas, and then suddenly this nobody gets to head the CIA with Swamp Thing and then become, of course, the Secretary of State. So it kind of seems like when you do work for multi-generational eugenesis, oh my goodness, you reap the big rewards. I mean, almost instantly that time. Uh, Speaking of pushback, though, some relateds to this week in pushback, Ian Brown steps down as headliner of a giant concert coming up in the UK in 2021. We grab this from NME.com, and they note that it comes after the Stone Roses star, an important, influential Brit rock group. The Stone Roses lead man, Ian Brown, last month tweeted that he would, quote, never sing to a crowd who must be vaccinated as a condition of attendance. Never, ever. And that's where the poll quote comes from the beginning. I refuse to accept vaccination proof as a condition of entry as he basically cancels his appearance at a giant concert 
because they're going to force everybody to show all their vaccination IDs. And I can say it right here, Ian, dude, if you're out there, please get in touch with us, man. I would love to talk to you, either of us. Reach out to the crazy music guy, but go on the you know the the more straight laced guy with the bigger audience. Would love to hear from Ian Brown. My Saturday night headline show at Weekender Festival will not happen. I refuse to accept vaccination proof as a condition of entry. Refunds are available. Meanwhile, I guess I gotta somewhat admire her commitment to the bit. Dolly gets a dose of her own medicine. Yuck! 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 From Jolene to vaccine, Dolly Parton gets the COVID-19 shot today that she helped fund just a couple of months ago. And that's a perfect way to set us up for the musical final segment on this New World Next Week, episode 439. James, this story just breaking today. Really interested in your thoughts on it, as a lot of it is somewhat new to me as well. Kings of Leon will be the first band to release an album as an NFT. And we grab this from Rolling Stone, but run it through archive.is so we're not giving them any traffic. This Friday, March 5th, record release day on Fridays, American rock band Kings of Leon will release their new album titled When You See Yourself in the form of a non-fungible token, NFT, becoming the first band to ever do so. So they're actually going to release three types of tokens as part of a series called NFT Yourself, a play on the album title When You See Yourself. And basically, I think Rolling Stone seems to have somewhat of the exclusive on this. One type is a special album package, while the second type offers live show perks like front row seats for life. Wow, that sounds really great especially in the Rona era. And a third type is just for exclusive audiovisual art. The smart contracts and intelligence within the tokens, which woo, sounds like rock and roll to me, man, developed by Yellow Heart, a company that wants to use blockchain technology to bring value back to music and better direct to fan relationships. You know, the thing we've been doing in indie alt media for 20 plus years, but whatever, major labels doing it now. A quick rundown of NFTs, a type of a type of cryptocurrency, but instead of holding money, they can hold assets like art, tickets, and music. NFTs operate on a blockchain, publicly accessible and transparent network, meaning anyone can see the details of any NFT transaction. Computers involved in the transaction become part of the network, which keeps updating and can't be hacked due to its nature as a many-headed hydra. In the case of NFTs, their value becomes subjective and therefore fluctuates, kind of like the stocks you're not allowed to trade. NFTs previously had a relatively underground following made up of DJs and producers. These digital tokens have gone mainstream as many musicians sought out additional revenue streams in the concertless era of the scamdemic. Kings of Leon's album will be released everywhere. Albums are released like normal. But the NFT version will be the only product with special perks. The token, priced at 50 bucks, includes enhanced media, kind of like an alternate moving album cover. Ooh, and of course, limited edition vinyl. Sale of the album, NFTs, open Friday at noon Eastern Time, continues for two weeks. After that time, no more will be made, and the NFT becomes a tradable collectible, they say. They also say to learn more about the subject, read Rolling Stone's Field Guide to Music's Potential Crypto Boom, where they note cryptocurrency enthusiasts envision a future where, one, artists are paid fairly, two, the secondary ticketing market is no longer ravaged by scalpers. Hey, remember, you're allowed to be fake woke Rolling Stone and still say scalpers for some reason. And of course, three, the value of digital memorabilia soars. Oh man, I know I love things I can't hold and possess. Again, this is like Baudrillard, copy of a copy of a copy, insert all my comments about physical media. But that's the thing, James, it almost seems like we want to make thin air worth something or something. Or something. Uh, yeah, and I, uh, I, I, absolutely. So there's so much to disentangle from this. And of course, I mean, the cynicism about uh, the major labels jumping on this buzzword laden um, bandwagon and marketing it as if it's some sort of brand new thing. Hey, we have a direct relation with our audience through this AI algorithm created by this corporation. Like, okay, yeah, of course. But, uh, and, uh, and, uh, 
so I think my our audience will be situated to understand that and see through a lot of that, including, of course, the the sort of underlying mechanism of this, the tokenization of the real world, um, which is a topic that I've I've talked about before. For example, in my conversation with Patrick Wood a couple of years ago, talking about the hard road to world order, and we talked about the tokenization of everything and how that's related to technocracy. But I also. I, 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 as I say, I think our audience will understand that. I also want to make this another example of ideas versus the implementation of those ideas and what what are some of the underlying ideas here and what do we not want to be throwing out with the bathwater. And in order to understand that, I think it is important to understand the, uh, the decentralization of finance, the taking away of the middleman and the central banks so that we can actually interact with each other and the possibilities that that unlocks. Of course, it unlocks all the technocratic side of it, but the possibility for peer-to-peer economy uh, developing and what that would look like is still vastly underappreciated, even in the so-called independent media sphere. And I really want to drive that home. I keep telling people that Money as Debt 3, um, Evolution Beyond Money from 2011, was Paul Guignon's, obviously, the third part of the Money as Debt trilogy. And it's very dense and it's not it's a cartoon. <laughs> hey, it's it's a cartoon, but it's not easy to understand. It takes some effort. So I understand why it's not so popular, but it really should be more popular. It's a very interesting uh, playing out of that concept of self-issued credit, which I think is really the base of the base of what's going on here. Tokenization and all this stuff is just fancy buzz laden buzzwords, but Self-issued credit is an important idea, and I hope people, more people will start to wrap their minds around it. So I'll throw in the link to The Money is Debt 3. I'll also throw in a link to uh, Think You Know How to End the Fed, Take the Fed Challenge, which I did um, a few years ago, which talked a, a little bit about that idea of self-issued credit and my take on it. And I hope people will check into that. I think there's a deeper idea underneath all this stuff. And... Yeah, I mean, it's just major labels and major label artists trying to jump on a bandwagon, but there's still something there, and I don't want to throw Baby out with bathwater. Absolutely, and and I should say, I like Kings of Leon a lot. I actually played them when they first came out. I was still actually back at running my college university radio station when their first EPs and things came out. They're southern brothers who were forced to grow up in the church, and all they wanted to do was rock and roll, so I kind of you know, feel a bit of Kings of Leon and I played some of their newest singles when I stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, nine to five mountain time at the media monarchy kingdom. Again, I don't really stream video so much, James. And I worry about, I mean, I've heard essentially of even D live given trouble to T lab and to folks like Dabu and others. And again, it almost seems like there's not a lot of platforms out there that you can trust. The Patreon exodus continues. Lots and lots and lots of folks moving over to subscribestar.com slash media monarchy. It pretty much does the exact same thing that Patreon does. But as far as I can tell, won't kick you off of their platform for weird medical misinformation and things. But again, not putting all my eggs in that basket. That's why we all upload our, our things every single day to multiple places. The most important being mediamonarchy.com that's where everything i've done for the last 15 plus years is all uploaded and hosted james and i would love for folks to come check it out yeah i got an email the other day from someone who was like uh yeah i i i kind of looked into crypto a bunch of years ago but then i just thought it looked really hard but now with all this patreon stuff i'm like i'm starting to think there might be a point to it i'm like yeah you think (laughs) i i guess i failed in my job as a communicator if even my audience is thinking that but oh well let's continue pressing forward and looking at solutions and on that note um once again Just as a side note, oh, by the way, yes, I'm censored off of YouTube again. I can't upload for another week, question mark. I don't know. I haven't checked today whether they've magically taken the strike off this time or not or whatever. I don't care. The channel is going down. I am not going to stop talking about actual truth about these vaccines and whatever else. So I am going to be censored off of YouTube 100%. It is going to happen Everybody better be be prepared for that. But anyway, if you're here listening to it, it's because you're not following me solely on my main YouTube channel. So congratulations, you made it this far. And uh, yeah, we'll keep uh, we'll keep playing the hopscotch game to different video platforms as they take people down. Oh no, no, we'll actually host our own content and we'll find IPFS backups and other ways to do this. 
But again, that's part of the solutions going forward. James, always look forward to this. Looking forward to it again next week. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much, buddy. Take care.